See, it's the introduction. I have given the introduction for three bodies. Now I have created the idea, basic idea for you all. From how we are going to understand. Now when we work on every body, put this question. I will explain to every body. In every body, what maximum you can gain? The fruit of this course is only three things. One is making your whole body more healthy. Increasing the innate healing capacity of your body. Increasing the innate healing capacity of your body. Second thing, releasing, unleashing the power to make your dreams into reality. Third thing, understanding the whole reality is nothing but your dream. This three is the main reason why I designed this course. This three is the thing. How it can be practically applied, understood? Ask me the same question in every body. When I explain, I will connect that and tell you. Uh, thank you. Uh, we, we, a few minutes back we were talking about there is a possibility that the future can be changed or the same. Uh, that comes to, uh, do you believe in horoscopes, uh, the effects of planets on each person? Astrology is true when the science is originally studied and practiced. But according to me, at least in my experience, I have seen only one or two people who are really well versed in the scripture, who are well, really well versed with the rules and regulations and practicing. Because you asked astrology, let me tell you a small incident which happened. One famous astrologer of India, very famous, he did our ASP. And after the ASP, he himself wanted to have some of his personal problems solved. He asked me, I, of, course, of course I spoke with him and I guided him. It was solved. That is different. He asked, when I was talking to him, I asked him. Uh, of course I don't want to tell his name, he's a very popular guy. And <laughs> such a good person I could. <laughs> I asked him. I know, you see, the writing like a common prediction is not accepted in our Shastras, it is not there in the Shastras. The common prediction idea itself does not exist in the Jyotish Sutras. Prediction can be done only for every individual, never for the group. No uh, common, uh, it is not a share market to give a common <laughs> rating or anything. No, it cannot be. That I know anyhow. But forget about Shastras. One important thing I want to know, ha, you see, for one Rasi, if you write 20 lines, you have to write. And 12 Rasi means 240 lines. 10, 10 newspaper means 2400 lines. Every day, how are you able to write 2400 lines? Please just tell me, do you have assistance? How are you able to write? That much you please tell me. Because it is such a Big work, writing 2400 line every day is not a joke. How could you manage? Tell me that. I was shocked when I heard the answer. He said, no, no, Swamiji. Just we have 10 set. <laughs> Today in uh, one paper, if it is a Mesha Rasi, next day in some other paper, it will be in Kanya Rasi. <laughs> Third day in some other paper, it will be Kumbha Rasi. Fourth day in some other paper, it will be Mesha Rasi. And fifth day in some other paper, it will be Midra Rasi. Just we reshuffle. For reshuffling, I have one assistant. <laughs> it is nothing but reshuffling. I said, people don't catch you. He was so confident. He says, Swamiji, nobody will purchase all the 10 paper. And nobody will read all the 12 Rasi. <laughs> Nobody will read all the 12 Rasi. People are going to purchase only one paper one and they are going to read only their Rasi. One Rasi. So naturally, nobody will catch us. And within a two months, three months, we change the 10th set. <laughs> we have the time to write the 10th set for three months. In three months, we change the 10th set. And after two, three years, we take from past. <laughs> and we rotate and reshuffle. <laughs> This is what is happening, Swamiji. And we guys, the moment we get up, what we do? First work? First work what? Rasi And afterwards only your mind will start thinking at all. 
Astrology is a true science, authentic science. What is your opinion on the Nadi Joseph? Is it true? True and false. True as far as few intuitions concern. They can hold the shaft and see the past, but not the future. If you see, your name will be, your mother's name will be there, dad's name will be there, yes. your name will be there. But seeing the future, very few can do. To see the future, you need intuition. To see the past, you don't need intuition. To see the future, you need intuition. You need a little bit of capacity to hold the time shaft for a few more minutes. If you have the capacity to hold the time shaft, only then you can see the future. If you have the capacity to hold the time shaft, you can see Nadi. And let me tell you a small incident which happened in my own life. When I was 14, I went to Vaidishwara village. They took me in the house pilgrimage, in the family pilgrimage. Generally, when you go for Nadi, they take your uh, fingerprint and then they will read by the, uh, by the time it ends, it will uh, give 10,000 rupees expense for you. <laughs> the Nadi will read, will read such a way that give this, give that to the person who reads and all those things. And this is the way usually <laughs> the Nadi will go. We will be surprised. The moment they took my uh, fingerprint and went inside, that uh, person, very elderly person, he came out with a big basket of fruits and uh, 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 flower, everything. And he said, this is the horoscope, this is a Nadi of a sannyasi. I was a 14-year-old boy. This is a Nadi of a sannyasi. And he's a great, uh, the, what to say, the spiritual person. If this Nadi comes, not only we are not supposed to read, we are supposed to offer whatever today we made. <laughs> and you know the honesty of the person, he offered the whole thing. And my family was seeing, all the money came back. <laughs> <laughs> whatever <laughs> money they gave, the whole thing was given back. The whole thing was brought. And you will be surprised, he said very clearly. And then my mom asked, my mother naturally, uh, the pain, oh, can't we stop, can't we do some dosha uh, parigara and all those things. Immediately he said, if you try to stop, you will die. If you try to stop, you will die. Then, of course, that is the end of the, they are trial to, trying to stop, that is different. But so clearly he was able to tell. When, when there is an intuition, there is every possibility. But the problem is, how long you are able to hold the uh, present moment. And one thing I have seen, whenever you get the capacity to hold the present, you never spend the energy in predicting the future. You spend it in correcting the future. People ask me, Swamiji, can you predict my future? I tell them, fool, I can change your future. Why are you bothering about <laughs> predicting your future? I can change your future. Work for that. Why should we waste the time in just predicting? There is no need. So be very clear. Whenever a man gets the power and capacity to hold the shaft and see the future, he just changes it. And you know, just his seeing is very vision. For example, people, when they come to know about their future in the life and they re really feel and surrender, when the master just holds the shaft, time shaft, just is eyesight, the Guru Parvai, the seeing of the Guru destroys the, totally removes the negativity of the future. That's what they say, Guru Bharka Kodi Bunyam. Just a sight of a master, because sight of a master is not a simple your sight. When you see something, immediately you will be taken away by the past or the future. Even if you see a rose, the moment you see a rose, your mind will say, word rose your mind will give the word rose. The next moment, you will start thinking about all the roses which you presented to somebody or roses which is presented to you. And the third moment, how was your reaction or her reaction? Whether you got the beating or <laughs> smile. And the fourth moment, the love emotion or the hatred emotion associated with that rose. You are already in the past. You are already in the future. But when master sees, he never sees like that. He just sees you as you are the present moment. So he catches the time shaft. Whenever the time shaft is 
cut, whenever you penetrate the time shaft, simply he sees your past and sees your future. There's a beautiful story. It's not a story, actually, truth. One guy is, guy is a born blind. He go, goes to see Ramakrishna. And somebody asks him, you are a blind fellow, why are you going to see him? He says, fool, I may not be able to see him, but he will be able to see me. That is more than enough for me. That is only going to play the role. Not me seeing him. I am seeing so many things. What will I see? What can I understand? Actually, we are seeing 1,000 person. If you see me, what will, what will you understand? Nothing can be understood. Nothing can be understood. At the most, you may misunderstand. <laughs> when you don't understand naturally, you misunderstand. When you miss the understanding, you misunderstand. So nothing can be understood. You seeing me is not a question. Me seeing you is the question. That is why, even if you, we are not able to see them, we go to see the masters in the ancient uh, tradition, there is a word called darshan. Please understand, darshan, Sanskrit word, does not mean seeing. Darshan does not mean seeing. Drushya means seeing. Drushya means past and the future. Seeing the past or the future. Runa means the, uh, what to say, the movements. Movements are the achievements. Runa, runa you, whether you have runa or not, they say, no. the runa, runa is the root. The achievements are the movements. Drishya means seeing the movements. So whatever you are doing is drishya. Darshana means stopping the movement and seeing. Penetrating. The word penetrating, maybe penetrating into the time shaft is the right translation for darshana. When master sees, he just penetrates you. He just penetrates you. And the very penetrating is a big help to remove the future, to clear the future, to help the future. That is why so much of importance is given to go and see the living masters and to go and touch the living masters, to go and feel the living masters, to go and be in their presence, all these things. Only when you deeply understand, all these subtle concepts can be realized. That is the problem. It needs a understanding. You see, now, as he said, and I tell you one thing, 25 people of you, 25 of you have raised your hands that you never had that experience. I promise you had. You only forgotten. You don't have so much of intravertness to rec recognize it and record it. That's all. There can be no human being who did not have that experience, what he expressed. If you say you did not have, it's like a, people say that I never dreamt. It is not that they never dreamt, they have forgotten. When the altered consciousness happens, you forget what has happened there. Otherwise, I, I am sure you cannot be alive without having that experience. Continuously it will happen. Because you are living being. If you are not introvert, if you are extravert, then you don't record it. You don't recognize it. You don't, you don't have enough of awareness what is happening in you. That's all. Because you don't have what, uh, enough awareness what is happening in you, you will not record it. A small story. One guy brought fish for his lunch to the office. And the moment he put the fish in his mouth, he felt, oh, I hate it. He threw it away. Next day, again the same fish. And he said, no, I don't feel like eating. He threw it away. Third day, again the same fish. The friend saw, why don't you tell your wife that you don't like fish? She will not be so adamant to send the same fish to you. Why do you suffer? He said, wife. Are I cook myself, I forget every day I don't like fish. <laughs> I cook myself and bring. That is what is happening to you. You forget. You forget. That is what? You don't have enough of awareness. You are caught in the same mental rut. There starts the whole trouble. There is the whole problem. It is not that the, these 25 people did not have this experience. No. You also had. 
you are not noted it down you are not you didn't have, you didn't have so much of awareness to see the subtle changes of the mind if you can observe especially the people who raise their hands that i experienced that 45 or 50 people you have that subtleness or the introvert idea that how to look into your own mind and these guys who has got this much of introvertness they can very clearly feel my presence if you are little introvert you can understand from outside you can tell whether i am in the room or not many people many devotees they tell me some day when i meditate sometimes when the group is meditating i go for a walk or come back we never hear the sound or anything but we can very clearly see something is passing us some big energy is moving next to us if you have the intravenous you can record you can register all those because these are all subtle deeper level happenings these are all happening in a deeper level consciousness that is why we miss many things yes i have another oh i'll let her go should be ready for long time okay so this conversation is about dreams it's uh it's very surprising to me because all my life i treated the dreams as a waste as a garbage mm-hmm. and um i see visions in my during my meditations and actually i I've, i've seen some things that happen to me in future and i build that my life through my meditations mm. so for me it is dilemma mm. do i have to go and analyze my dreams mm. forget about this or stay with whatever i am with my meditation and my mm. clear visions mm-hmm. so in which visions are more important which came from your dream or which came from your meditation one thing there is no need for you to analyze forget about it If you start analyzing from the very beginning you will create only more confusions forget about it the very idea you getting the very system that you are getting again and again this type of visions is more than enough that will guide you in the future that system you keep it alive that is enough there is no need to go and analyze the whole thing and uh, get into the big trouble there is no need but always the visions you, which you get in dreams are less powerful than the visions you get in the dream which you get it in the meditation what you achieve in the meditation is surely more powerful than what you achieve in the dream state but for a person who never achieves anything in the meditation for him the dream state visions are powerful thank you if you have the uh, have something in the meditation surely that is more powerful come mm. here i have a three part question mm. you said that only in the meditative state mm. you can that's the center of the shaft mm. how can we permanently be holding the shaft mm. when you t- how can you permanently be meditating mm. when you sit down to meditate even once? see when i say meditating i i don't mean close your eyes and do all those things not that live in the present moment live inside this body live inside your boundary don't travel where you are not that's enough don't be like a ghost as on now we are just ghosts if you are sitting in the house you will be thinking of office if you are in the office you will be thinking about evening beach santa cruz if you are sitting in santa cruz you will be thinking about when to go back to the house if you are in the house next day morning when to start the office you are like a ghost where you are your being is not instead of that start living inside your boundary you are in meditation you will catch that shaft time shaft just be inside the boundary now we are going to do the technique today in the physical body we are going to do a technique how to be inside your boundary 